He joined me outside the Shipley Art Gallery in Gateshead. The gallery is currently closed due to the coronavirus pandemic, but I'm here today as part of our regular building checks and I brought a camera with me. I thought it would be a good opportunity to take a look at some of the gallery's collections. Let's take a look. It's currently May half term and it's unusual to see the Shipley Art Gallery this quiet. It would usually be busy with families and activities going on in the main gallery spaces. But the relative quiet does give us an opportunity, a moment, to actually take a look at some of the artworks that make the gallery such a pleasure to visit. And today I'd like to look at some of our ceramics collections. The Shipley Art Gallery has one of the strongest studio ceramics collections in the UK. The gallery started collecting ceramics in earnest in the 1970s and its collection was significantly boosted throughout the 1990s by gifts and loans from Henry Rothschild. A large part of the Shipley's collection is displayed in the dedicated Henry Rothschild Study Centre. The two pots I have in front of me here were both made at the Leach Pottery in St Ives in the 1960s. This one uh, by Bernard Leach and the smaller one by Janet Leach. Bernard Leach set up the pottery in St Ives in 1920 and he was heavily inspired by Japanese pottery, particularly the tradition of individually handmade pieces. By the 1920s, most pottery in Britain was now being mass produced in factories and the tradition of artisanal individually made pieces was fading. And that's something that Bernard Leach uh, wanted to revive and certainly became one of the most significant potters of the 20th century in doing so. Looking a little closer at these pots, if we take the lid off this lizard jar, we can see that it's very regularly made. It has an even weight throughout the body of the pot. If I turn it upside down you can see on the bottom the BL Potter's Mark of Bernard Leach and the Potter's Mark symbol of the Leach Pottery. You can also see these, these regular cut sides. So that this, this is a piece which has been thrown on a potter's wheel, so formed from an individual spinning uh, chunk of clay and then shaped by cutting away these sides. So it's what we call a cut sided jar. And these have been cut away with a wire or a, a potter's harp which is a wire suspended in a bow that's cut away the sides to form this regular pattern. So if I put this one to one side for a moment, we take a look at the smaller pot by Janet Leach. So if we look on the, the underside of this, you can see here the familiar mark, the potter's mark of the Leach pottery. And also the uh, JL mark of Janet Leach next to it. This jar, like, like, the, um, like the larger Bernard Leach piece, has been decorated by sides being cut away in this regular sort of sunshine pattern from the top of the vase and then also further decorated by being combed, so we call this combing, with this rib design which runs throughout. And once again, although it's a, a sort of regular pattern, you unmistakably have the decoration being applied by the by the potter and having this sense of you know where, where we can feel here the sort of the hand of the artist when handling the pot. Here in the stores at the Shipley Art Gallery, I've picked out a few objects which do interesting things with the same sort of techniques of decoration that we saw with those pots um, from Bernard and Janet Leach. These two uh, objects next to me are both made by a ceramicist named John Bedding. Now John Bedding trained as he was apprenticed to Bernard Leach at the Leach Pottery in the 1960s. So that's the same time um, that the two pots we saw earlier were made. These were made in the 1970s and what we see here is Bedding gradually moving away from the um, more traditional techniques that were typical of the Leach Pottery and finding his own voice. As a, as a ceramicist. So let's take a look at this smaller vase by bedding. We see at the bottom here 
the JB Potter's Mark alongside the Leech Pottery Potter's Mark. The work has a regular glaze and a regular shape and like the lidded jar that we saw by Bernard Leach, it has these neatly cut sides that are slightly irregular. Inside you can feel there's it's been very evenly thrown and shaped on the wheel and altogether it's a very elegant piece which is certainly typical of the, the Leach pottery style. So this large picture from the 1970s is I think more distinctively a work by the hand of John Bedding. Quite literally because if we look at these designs that, are, that appear all around the, the sides of the picture, they're created by the artist's own fingers running wax resist down the side to create this sort of regular pattern. It's not entirely dissimilar to the combing effect that we saw on the Janet Leach vase, but it's far more, uh, it's far looser, far freer, far more expressive. Likewise, the glaze is far more interesting. It's a layered glaze. There's a, a green ash glaze over a, a darker iron uh, glaze, and we may have to talk about glazing in more detail in a future film. In front of me now, I've got two uh, sets of pots by Julian Stair and Rob Bernard. Both of these are from the late 90s, I think. What's interesting about these is we've been talking throughout this film about decoration and particularly the use of, um, uh, of cut-sided decoration, of, uh, of ceramicists cutting away at a pot once it's been formed on the, on the wheel. And that is basically all that's happening with these pots. Really, really minimal decoration. With the Rob Bernard pots, we have this um, pale white glaze. There's a glaze inside the Julian Stair pots, but the outside is unfinished. So they take on this really faceted architectural shape. They're far less decorative, far less embellished than the works we've seen from the Leach pottery. But they're very interesting in terms of their proximity to the artist's hand. And I think particularly when you look at the, the Julian Stair pieces, it's almost like they're still fresh, wet on the potter's wheel having just been cut. So sticking with the theme of ceramicists decorating their work using the techniques of cutting and combing, I want to close by looking at these pieces by the artist Katerina Evangelidou. These bottle vases are some of the more recent objects in the collection, dating from around 2008. They have heavily carved, flattened bodies, and the carving is rough and irregular in contrast to the neat silhouettes of Bernard Leach and Julian Stair that we saw earlier. Some of Evangelidou's vases are also assembled in parts with separate cylinders thrown on the wheel and then joined together and altered and reformed. And whereas the Julian Stair piece seemed to exist as if it was almost still wet on the potter's wheel, Evangelidou takes the finished product from the wheel as a point of departure, of adventure. That's where the work really starts to change and develop. The surface effects, of course, are achieved from the ash in the kiln and from salt added during firing. Take a look at these heavily combed vases on the right. They use the same decorative elements we've seen again and again, this combing that we saw in the Janet Leach uh, vase at the start of this film. But here it's less of a decorative motif and actually more a part of the fabric of the work. Evangelidou's vases are very sculptural they're carved and constructed into shape, assembled and reworked. Thanks for joining us for this short film about the Shipley Art Gallery and its collections. We hope you'll join us again soon.